This might look like an ordinary pool ball, but listen to the sound it makes in action. Pieces like this are created by prop masters who are known for constantly inventing new kinds of silent props. This is just one of many surprising behind-the-scenes roles in movies and TV. And while you might not have heard of them before, Hollywood wouldn't be the same without them. Costumes need to realistically reflect the action. But because scenes are often shot out of order, costume designers need to be creative with everything from sweat stains to rips and blood. That's where breakdown artists like Sarah Blostein come in, who's worked on numerous projects, including The Boys. First, Sarah has to think about how clothes are destroyed naturally. For example, fresh blood stains are a much brighter shade of red than the darker color you see hours later once the blood is dried. And bullet impacts are usually recreated safely with squibs on set, which will blow a huge hole through the fabric. But in reality, bullet holes are actually much smaller. So Sarah uses a craft knife to create more realistic looking damage. All this realism, however, needs to align with production continuity. So while it might look like Frenchie is sweating through his shirt here, those stains are really a mixture of water and paint. That way, the stains will remain on a shirt no matter how many times the scene is shot, or even if it's actually filmed before the action. Sometimes, actors need to eat something on camera that they couldn't or that might be unsafe to consume in real life. Unique culinary dilemmas call for an edible prop maker like Melissa McSorley. For example, the character Ms. Crumble from Netflix's Daybreak feasts on live maggots by the handful. All animals, including maggots, are protected from harm on film sets, so Melissa needed to come up with a lifelike replacement. First, she looks for something that has the same texture and color, like gelatin. This mixture ranged from caramel to a mix of coconut and almond milk to account for the maggots that become darker as they age. Her edible maggots were made to taste good, but the ingredients also provided just the right bounciness to make the viewer squirm. To create this edible cockroach for Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, she had to get even more creative. Melissa started with a date. She then meticulously placed chili threads and seaweed strands into it for legs and antennae. And to make sure that it was 100% edible, she used the date's natural stickiness as opposed to glue to keep it all together. Sometimes, even if a food prop won't be eaten on camera, Melissa still needs to make a replica. To make sure the kitchen environment stayed sanitary in this scene from Homecoming, Melissa made fake raw chicken guts out of noodles and kumquats. Many actors may have perfectly straight white teeth, but the characters they play on screen call for something completely different. So dental technician Gary Archer spends his time making convincing fake dentures. After molding and 3D scanning, Gary fabricates the teeth out of acrylic and then uses dental safe staining to add a nice shine or yellowing. That's how Gary gave Austin Powers his signature smile. Gary also has to adapt fake teeth for whatever the script calls for in a scene. By simply painting one of Austin Powers' teeth black, it looked like a gap under just the right lighting. And in this moment from Office Christmas Party, Gary attached that one fake tooth with wax, so all the actor needed to do was flick his tongue and it would pop right out. Gary also used wax to attach a pair of breakaway braces to this aligner. The prosthetic was placed over Kirsten Dunst's real teeth for On Becoming a God in Central Florida. The hardest props to control on set are sometimes the most ordinary objects. A paper bag and a cup full of ice can create unwanted noise that interferes with dialogue. So prop maker Tim Schultz devised a solution that turned into a business, silent props. These props look identical to their real counterparts, but Tim makes them out of material that makes much less sound. Instead of using a regular paper bag, he uses a replica using fibrous, non-woven fabric, similar to coffee filters. He adds distinct paper bag qualities, like a jagged edge and a stamp on the bottom. Even with groceries inside, you won't hear much. His most used material is vinyl, which can be transformed into potato chip bags or cellophane flower wrap, as seen in this shot from the Kaminsky method. I have no idea. But silent props don't always have to be made from scratch. 
For example, Tim figured out that he could cut down the noise on real paper bags by spraying them so that Melissa McCarthy could wear them on her hand and head in 2014's Tammy. And when doing pool hall scenes on shows like Friday Night Lights, prop maker Scott Reeder took racquetballs and painted them to look like pool balls. Same size, same look, but much quieter. Organizing tens of thousands of extras can be a logistical nightmare. So digital crowd supervisors are tasked with making crowds look larger than they actually are. In order to fill a stadium with over 26,000 spectators in Ted Lasso, Barnstorm VFX's Lawson Deming started by gathering a small group of real people. These plate extras were filmed in front of a green screen and then placed into the digital crowd individually to fill out any empty seats. When working on the show Insecure, Barnstorm used what's known as crowd tiling, where a small group is moved around to several different positions to create the illusion of a much larger crowd. Crowd supervisors had to make sure these groups didn't look too similar, so they mix up both their configuration and outfits. When it comes to wider shots like this one of Nelson Road Stadium in Ted Lasso, Lawson used digital doubles. Through sophisticated software, he was capable of taking whole groups of digital spectators and assigning them specific actions, like booing or cheering, based on motion capture performances of a real actor. Nailing down the look of a well-known person in a movie is one challenge, but makeup and fake facial hair alone won't cut it if a performer can't also move like them. Professional movement coaches like Polly Bennett can help with that. She has worked with numerous actors, including Rami Malek on his portrayal of Freddie Mercury in Bohemian Rhapsody. While they watched hours of reference footage to learn the entirety of Queen's Live Aid performance, Polly also dove into Freddie Mercury's past to figure out how he moved and danced the way he did. He was a boxer and a runner, which is why he could change direction so quickly on stage. Movement coaching is also useful for any super complex choreography. Take Last Night in Soho, where Anya Taylor-Joy and Thomas and McKenzie had to imitate each other's movements with precise timing for the film's mirroring and dancing shots. Movement coach Jennifer White had the actresses imitate each other in front of a mirrorless frame. And for this mirrored dance sequence, she choreographed all the dance moves in sync with the camera so Anya and Thomason could dodge the camera operator at just the right moment. It's just as important for every background actor to hit their mark. While Polly worked with Austin Butler to move on stage just like the king of rock and roll in Elvis, she also worked with all the extras in the crowd to make sure they were giving the best reactions imaginable. As if they were really seeing Elvis live. Some practical creatures need more complex movements than wires alone can provide. So these animatronics will run on sophisticated computerized mechanics called servos. But like any puppet, they're only as good as the puppeteer, or in this case, roboticist, behind them. As Spectral Motion's head of animatronics, Mark Satrakian controls motors so that they'll convey realistic expressions. Like the scrunt from Lady in the Water, which was designed with mechanics to move its soft lips back and reveal its teeth. Other times, Mark programs animatronic pieces that an actor will have to wear, like the performer who played Edward the Troll in Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters. Mark gave him hands capable of realistic compression and a mask that could flare its nostrils. The key to being a great animatronic puppeteer is always finding new technology to improve your creations. For example, this modern servo could move in a variety of unique directions. Mark knew it would fit perfectly into a white spike's neck allowing this terrifying creature from the Tomorrow War to tilt its head. You're probably used to seeing stunt performers running, jumping, and flying, but another surprising part of the job description, being invisible. These crew members dress head to toe in either green or blue, depending on whether they're filming in front of a blue or green screen. So it's easier to remove them in post-production. They're often used to give actors references when working with a fully CG character. In The Invisible Man, this one gave Elizabeth Moss someone to interact with during this fight scene. You can also see them filling in for creatures on the set of live action films like The Jungle Book and Dumbo. But they're not always playing a specific character. Sometimes they help with special effects like flying scenes. The suits also let them hide in plain sight so they can steer the performer who's strapped into wires or a tuning fork. People don't scream as often in real life as they do in movies. Quite simply, it's exhausting. An actor can risk losing their voice after just a few takes. 
So scream artists like Ashley Pelton and Scott White are hired to take off some of the burden. <laughs> Professional scream artists come in during post-production of a film or show to dub the sound of screams. And getting the perfect scream involves first nailing the emotion of the scene. Then they'll do what's called chasing the scene, in which they'll watch the given sequence from start to finish, adding in any effort sounds in sync with the action. A scream artist will also frequently dub the scream of a recognizable actor, so they'll need to match them as closely as possible, like when Scott did Tom Hardy's screams and grunts for the motorcycle chase in Venom. <laughs> Planning and storyboarding the biggest blockbusters is now more advanced and detailed than ever before thanks to previs artists. Previs artists create a rough CG version of a given action sequence based on the script and the director's vision. This allows the crew to experiment and work out any kinks before shooting. The third floor's previs artists started mapping out the tone and action for Avengers Endgame three years before the film's release. And the bus fight from Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings would not have been possible without the previs artists working out the exact movements and angles the bus would move at on set. Previs artists can also make the final product more realistic. For example, this previs put together by Frame Store from Gravity helped the film nail down realistic zero-g movements. Hair is one of the most challenging elements to animate in 3D, as there's simply so much of it to control at once. So many of Walt Disney Animation Studios animators spend their time making lifelike human hair. Like with water and cloth, hair needs to be simulated so each strand moves together in an automated and realistic way. One of their biggest challenges is animating how someone's hair interacts with the elements, such as light, shadows, and the wind. This is especially the case with curly hair, which needs to retain its shape even as it moves and interacts with the world. So they built a program called Quicksilver that gave them the ability to both rig and groom Maui and Moana's curly hair in Moana. This meant they could put their hairdos into a starting pose, and Quicksilver could determine how it would move from there. Fast forward to 2021, when they featured every category of hair texture, from 1A to 4C in Encanto. They even expanded their library of curly hair, making even tighter coils for Mirabelle. The best hair animators can also bend physics in order to follow the rules of a specific animated world. For example, Tangled's animators never let Rapunzel's hair fall in a straight line, and instead gave it lots of rhythmic curves. The 2019 horror film Saint Maud features a cockroach in a prominent role, and the roach that got the starring role? She worked with animal trainer Grace Dickinson, who helped her hit all of her marks. Getting roaches to perform on camera means Grace plays to their strengths. Roaches are scent-oriented and love sweet things, so she'll have them go from point A to point B, where they will be rewarded with jelly, nectar, or honey water. Roaches are great on camera as they have a calm demeanor, but sudden light or temperature changes can stress them out, and those elements can't always be easily controlled on set. So Grace also knows how to keep them calm. The key? Pampering them. To keep her roaches from dropping a stink bomb or flying away, she always makes sure to have a mini habitat with her on set. This lets the roaches relax until they're ready for their next take. 